Welcome back to Matt's class. This is video number three of a series of videos where we're showing you how to paint a portrait that has a mixed media style that creates that larger than life look that you see in classic movie posters. Stay with us because it's gonna get colorful today. So one of the things I meant to mention a little bit earlier in the previous videos is you've probably noticed I'm not in my art studio. And the reason why we're not in the art studio is I wanted to show you that you can do this kind of painting without the fancy drawing desk. In fact, here I am hanging out. I'm not at the kitchen table. I actually don't have a kitchen table at the moment. I am at the kitchen counter. And we're going to do these really cool paintings today. You don't need the big fancy art desk. I have one and it's cool and it's fun to use that too. But honestly, half the time I just hang out at the kitchen table. Before I had the money to get a really nice table, this is how I used to work. And sometimes it's nice. You know, we got a little bit of uh, sunlight coming through today. It's partly cloudy today, but it's kind of nice with a little sunshine coming in. So we're hanging out in the kitchen. Plus, I have my Starbucks keeping me company. So we have our darkest darks ready to rock. We've got Aladdin and Fiji hanging out. This is on the textured gesso board. And we've got Princess Kamala. And this is just straight up on an illustration board where we are gonna begin to add washes. We've got our darkest darks ready to go. So what we are going to do today, we are going to make some washes and washes are transparent paint. What we're doing, we're gonna be using paint straight out of the tube to mix our washes. Now I've got these little canisters here. You can actually buy these little art canisters at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Uh, again, if you watch that video on painted illustration materials, I kind of show all the different things you can do. But these are old film canisters when people used to develop film. I'm gonna fill this up with about 75% water. I've got this jug here. This is what I'm gonna use to wash out my brushes, but I've got water in here. So I'm basically just gonna steal water from this and I've got about like, I don't know, maybe 75% in there. I'm gonna take my paint, and this is a bright aqua green, and I wanna get some of that color. She's got uh, in her, I don't know what this would be called, it's like her bikini top kind of thing. It's part of her dress. And then uh, I was thinking in the background it might be a cool color, even though it's got this color. Again, what we're always trying to do with illustration, what can we do to make it even better than the photo. What kind of choices can we make? And so I wanna add a little more color and zest to this. So when I mix my washes, I put about as much paint as like squeezing out toothpaste that you would put on your, on your toothbrush. So I just kind of put it in like that. That should be good. And now I'm going to mix my wash. That's a lot of toothpaste. Oh, you don't put as much? I put a lot of toothpaste, I guess. Well, it's paying off, Matt. There is such a thing as too much paint. It'll streak and you'll get like chunks of paint in what you're painting. Mm. Um, so you def it'd be better to have less paint than too much. Now, if you have less, it'll be really thin and watery and it just won't be adding as much color. So you kind of want to find that threshold where it's really good color, but not opaque. You want it to be, it's transparent, a transparent wash. You can kind of tell when you pull out your brush, if you see little clumps of paint, then it's not enough. You want it to be as watery as possible. It can be milky where you see a lot of color, but it should be all drips. If you actually see little chunks, of, like you see those little grains of paint in there, that means it needs to mix a little bit more. I've had students ask if they can just shake it. That doesn't really do anything. Now, it doesn't matter what color you start with. We've already got our lights and darks. I just thought I would help maybe add in a little bit of background, again, just to kind of separate things. Sometimes I start with skin tones, but sometimes in this case, I want to wait a little bit just to get a little bit more value in there and just a little bit more color before I start judging my skin tones. All right, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to lay in a wash. I've got my reference here. I'm gonna look for any place where I see this color. Her eyes almost have a little bit of this color. There's, they're just kind of this crazy hazel, but you know what? 
Uh, we're painting in layers, so it's not going to hurt if I throw a little bit of this down. Now, anywhere that I see, some of these areas are going to need to go a little bit darker, but there's like these square. So this is going to need to go much, much darker, but that's okay. That's kind of the idea. We are doing this in stages. I would rather it'd be lighter rather than darker because at least you can add more. You can't really take away a layer. That's true. And there are things you can do here and there to fix, but with this tech, with this stage, with washes, it is better to go lighter and then build up as you go. That's exactly it. In this stage, it's really kind of watercolory, really. It is, um, it is almost like a watercolor technique as we are adding in our washes. I see sometimes people don't necessarily wait for the layer to dry before applying a secondary one. Um, That's usually a mistake. You usually want to let it dry completely. Otherwise, you'll get weird, like it'll mix in in places you don't want it to. I want to add this into the background. So I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm going to use this one inch flat. And I just want to get some uh, color in the background to kind of make her hair and everything else stand out. Now, some of it might overlap a little bit into the hair, and that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be perfect. It can, it can overlap because a lot of times when you're looking at people in nature, those colors in the background will kind of overlap anyway. And you don't want to keep working it too much. You want to let, like at first you could kind of see the streaks, but you see how when you kind of let it go, it just, it, go, it dries a little bit more flat. You want to kind of let it just do its thing and let it dry as is. There is such a thing as working it too much. Also, if you work it way too much, you can actually lift up a little bit of the illustration board. It'll just get so wet that the top it's like interior. part of the peeper, yeah, it, it, the, it just it comes right up. So one of the reasons I like to do two portraits at the same time, and a lot of times when I'm working on projects, I will schedule multiple illustrations at the same time because I can usually double task. Like while I have to wait a couple minutes for this to dry anyway, so I might as well start working on this one over here. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the first wash on this one. I'm gonna let this one dry. And what do I wanna do for Aladdin? I think I want to have, um, do I have a yellow here already mixed? Oh, it looks like I do. Maybe start with a yellow and maybe like a, a yellow orangish kind of background or something might be kind of cool. I've got this big container here filled with water. This just helps me clean out my brush. Now you could use something like a little Solo cup or a little Dixie cup or something like that. But if you don't have a lot of water, it just gets diluted really quick, so it really helps to have something a little bit bigger. So this is already a pre-mixed yellow, so I just need to mix it up just a little bit more since I haven't used it in a while. And then I'm just going to lay in some yellow in the background, but I'm starting to think, you know what would be cool? If there was a little bit of a sun in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to do that, yeah, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and trace out lightly. And there. Yeah, I like that. So that's where my gleaming sun is going to be. I'm going to, I just got, uh, just to make sure, <laughs> put this in the sink. I just want to separate that background. So I'm just going to lay in some yellow into the background. Now this is the textured one, so sometimes the washes will kind of fall into the grooves a little bit more, but that's okay. It, so it'll dry a little bit differently, but it's gonna have that textured look. Again, it's just gonna make it a little bit more rugged. I'm gonna switch to the bigger brush just to make this go a little bit quicker. So I'm washing out my one inch flat, because right now it's got that turquoise color in there. I'll go ahead and grab some yellow. And let's do this. Let's throw some in there. So this technique, it was not invented by Drew Struzan, but Drew Struzan probably is one of the artists that made it the most popular. But it's a really good technique, and the reason why a lot of movie posters use this technique, or a variation of this technique, 
it really lends itself well to making changes and the demands of the movie advertising uh, business a lot of times last minute clients have changes and crazy things like you know we love this poster exactly as as is but you need to make so and so's head larger or you need to move this over well that means usually repainting so the the good thing about acrylics in general but especially this technique it lends itself well to if you need to paint something over or change a reference or whatever you can take a finished painting you can gesso over the parts that need to be adjusted and just repaint and uh, and do it again and get it the way that it needs to be relatively easy. You can't always do that with a lot of different oil painting techniques or certainly gouache techniques or watercolor doesn't lend itself well to doing changes after the fact. Right now it's not even so much about rendering as it is about separating color. We're going to get more rendered as we go along but we're just trying to separate basic colors, some basic shapes. As I'm waiting for this to dry, this one's almost dry now, so I can kind of switch back to this. I can start mixing my next color. Again, I'm just trying to separate color. I'm gonna bounce around through a bunch of different colors. The lips are pink, but I, I have this red here. So just for some of the darker areas, I'm gonna render it out more specific to the colors a little bit later, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of add in just kind of where the darker area goes. This is kind of a shadow over here. Just push this over here a little bit. Yeah. Then I'm going to add some red to Aladdin's shirt. Right now, this is almost looking like a Patrick Nagel painting. Some of the darker areas around Fidgey's eyes, mostly orange, but this will kind of help. Aladdin's shirt. So, there's some glares on here, but at first, I'm just gonna do a lighter wash of red, just kind of everywhere this kanji print is. So this is Aladdin. The actor is Eric Steele. This is the main character from this trilogy of movies that I have recently finished filming. And it's a live action take. It's a sci-fi take on the Aladdin tale, but it's set 1,500 years in the future. This is Aladdin. And he, unlike, you know, Disney has Abu the monkey, but that's, that's Disney, and so I'm not allowed to touch that. There's certain things, you know, Aladdin's public domain, so there's certain things that I was able to use and then certain things that I was not allowed to use, and sadly, Abu was not one of them. But I actually had developed an Aladdin-type character when I was in college, and he had this sidekick, this robot sidekick, named Fiji that floated by his shoulder, and so that's kind of how Fiji came into the picture. Just his necklace, I can get some of this fun stuff in here. This yellow ochre. So again, it's not as much rendering. We're separating colors at first. We will get to the rendering soon enough. Now here, her hair is a little bit warmer and I can probably, you know what? I'm actually going to add some of this into her hair just to help separate. This is not the color that it is, but with washes, it's layers. We're layering up to get to the colors we want. And the more layers we have, the deeper and richer those colors can be. The other thing that we're trying to do with washes, we're doing what I call get rid of the white. So ideally, we don't wanna have any white of the board showing when we get through the wash stage. Even if there's, there's an area that you know is absolute white, we wanna control our whites later through opaque painting. So obviously I'll get to that when, when we get to that. You don't have to worry about that yet, but just know that you kind of wanna cover everything with a little bit of wash paint. And that's kind of one of the secrets of the technique that's gonna make it look so three-dimensional. So hear me now and believe me later. You're gonna love it when you see what it does. Some of the areas, like there's these bright, lights in Fiji's eyes, but I didn't want to 
I wanted to cover it because I really want to control I'm going to control those highlights later with paint. All right, it's about time I start painting skin tones. Usually for skin tones, I'm not using anything straight out of the tube, so I have to mix my own skin tones, and you can do that for any of these colors. I mean, generally, I'm working with just a color straight up uh, out of the tube mixed into one of these canisters, but for skin tones, I like to mix that. So I start off with a, uh, a blank canvas here no pun intended this canister and I've got my water in here then um, I need to mix and I have three colors and this is actually uh, a secret mixture I didn't come up with this concoction but uh, one of my mentors Gary Meyer he actually painted the original posters for Jaws and King Kong he was also one of the storyboard artists on the original, the very first Star Wars movie. And this, uh, this guy was just, just an amazing painter. And his secret recipe for mixing paint uh, for skin tones is three colors. And those three colors are Christmas colors. Believe it or not, red, green, and a pinch of white, and that makes skin tones. I kid you not. Now this is the basis for any skin tone, doesn't matter the nationality. People don't really have, like the skin tones that people have, like we say that people are like different colors of the world, and that's kind of true, but not, not really. We're all kind of the same. Some people have more intensity of color, and some people have, you know, slightly darker shades or slightly lighter shades. But the basis of what that color is, is actually pretty much the same. You can add or take or push away, push and pull a little bit to make uh, the colors a little bit different. But the basis that you're starting with for anyone uh, is the same. So we're going to do that right now. So I am going to start uh, with half red, half green. So I'm using the middle of the road red. This is cadmium red medium. This is like candy apple red basically. Then I'm going to use light green permanent. Now this is light, it says it's light green. It's not that light green, but it's kind of a middle of the road Ninja Turtle green. So this is gonna be our green. And then white, we've got gesso. So we're gonna put in a splash of this. Here we go. So you wanna use equal parts red and green. If anything, there should be a pinch more red, but usually if you're equal uh, to both red and green, you should be good to go. So there is our red. Now we're gonna mix in green. That might be too much green, we'll see. And then a pinch, and I mean like a drop or two of white, because it's gonna be transparent. You can always make it darker. There we go. There's our pinch of white. Let's mix and see what we get. One of the reasons this works is red and green are complementary colors. So anytime you mix complementary colors, you get kind of a brownish kind of color. So that would almost work if you did yellow and purple or blue and orange, but red and green is just a little bit closer to like a skin tone brown. And then we've got that dash of white. What we're looking at is a little bit too dark. But remember, this is going to be transparent, so the way that this lays in, we're going to be able to see through it. How dark that is, and then you look at the blue that's actually on there, you can see this is like really transparent, where this is not transparent. You can't see through that liquid, but you can see through the transparent wash. So the same is going to be true of our skin tones. I'm pulling out my brush. I see clumps of red and green, so this is not mixed enough you definitely need to mix this good, especially the skin tones, because if you start laying them in and there's clumps of paint, the last thing you want is little green bleh, like all over the face. That's not gonna look good, so you need to mix this great. All right, so I've got my wash mixed, and you can kind of see it's, um, it almost looks like a, a medium brown, but when it's transparent, and sometimes you want to test on a scrap piece of paper or better yet, if you have a scrap piece of illustration board, you'll be able, if you're nervous about it, you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like when you lay it down. But I've been doing this for a while so I can kind of tell it's nice and watery. This is going to go on just fine. So what you want to do for skin tones, you want to use a bigger brush if possible 
and you want to lay it in everywhere as quickly as possible and you want to let it just kind of be flat and if there's some areas here where it overlaps the hair that's okay because we're going to go so much darker with the hair anyway i'm going to cover the eyes i'm going to cover the lips i'm going to cover it like i'm probably going to get some on her corset piece here and everything it's going to get all over but what i'm most concerned with is I need to get I need to get rid of the white and I need to just get a flat skin tone to start with. We'll get more rendered as we go along. So I've got my big brush here, loading it up with some wash. And are you ready for this? Here we go. And it's good when you are laying in, especially skin tones, when you lay in your washes, if you go in a single direction, I usually go straight up and down. Now I'm gonna add in right here. And then I'm gonna let it dry. I don't wanna work it too much. I just wanna let it dry flat so it doesn't have lots of streaking in it, like lots of paint strokes. I can see a little bit here where it got a little bit darker, but you know what? Once I put in everything else, you're not gonna notice that. This is one step of the process, and there's gonna be a lot more. It's, it's working in layers. What's interesting to me is when we're first taught about art and then adding color to things, it's always just so crucial, we're told, to stay within the lines. But uh, here, you're just breaking all the rules, and, it's cut, and then that's how you make it look beautiful. Well, and what's going to happen, we are going to be defining those edges better later. So we're almost more concerned with like flat tones at this point than we are it being perfect. And in the end, sometimes that helps it look more painterly. And, uh, and sometimes that'll actually be a good thing. It'll look really cool. It's super light. At first it looked really dark, didn't it? But now you're looking at it and it's like, ah, oh, it's, not, it's not so bad. Once we add more shadows, it's actually relatively light. I wanna go a little bit darker with uh, some of these aquas. So I can basically just take the same aqua that I already mixed and I can hit some of these areas that I want to go a little bit darker. And now that'll dry darker. Again, this is all steps taking us to where we want to go. All right, so I'm gonna add a little more to the background. I thought it'd be cool if it's a little bit lighter towards her and then if it just slowly gets darker uh, as we move away from her. Some people would call this um, a vignette where it's getting uh, kind of darker around the image and it kind of makes you focus on this area here. Hmm. Closer and closer, it's getting a little more rendered, a little bit more fleshed out each step of the way. This looks like it's pretty dried in his face. So now we're gonna go a little bit darker with the skin tones. So what we're gonna do now, I've got this general kind of wash over all of Aladdin here. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got my skin tone right here it's nice and mixed up and it's transparent but the more layers I paint the darker it's gonna get now it's never gonna like go to black the darkest it'll get is this color here but that would be a lot a lot of washes so at some point I'll have to use like a dark brown or start mixing in some purples to try to get those shadows but for starters anywhere that I see that's darker on his face I can go ahead and hit that again with this skin tone. So for one, um, his hair is just gonna go darker and darker each time. I might as well kind of get that whole area. A little bit of a cast shadow casting from his hair. And his forehead there. Brow a little bit darker. under the eyelid. The brow here.
and this already it's just one of many layers that we're going to do but already this is helping to kind of add three dimension to Eric's face layering so we're going to get darker as we go the cool thing is we started with our darkest darks so the great thing is we actually now can see how much darker some of these areas need to go that's one of the reasons why it's important to add in those darkest darks at first because if we were painting these skin tones now we might feel like whoa this is really dark but since we see those darkest darks it really in the grand scope of where it needs to go here it's not anywhere near as dark enough but it's harder to judge that when you don't have those darkest darks laid down already it's not much but it's just a little bit more and you can see how his face is really starting to come together. And I'm gonna switch back to the princess, back and forth while each one is drying. So I got the skin tones, they look like they're pretty dry here. You definitely wanna wait for them to be dry. If it's still a little bit wet, do not go back in and continue to paint because you're gonna lift up the color that's underneath. So you definitely need to wait until, uh, you can't paint over until that color underneath is dry. I gotta be careful here, on the outsides, this, this aqua is still wet, so I don't wanna lay my hand on that. But the face, skin tones look dry. So we're good to go. You want to be mindful of where those hard edges and soft edges are. Hopefully you've got good reference, which I talked about in a previous video on getting good reference. And I also have a previous video on the three secrets of illustration. It's another one you definitely want to watch if you haven't yet that is definitely going to help you. A lot of these shadows need to go way darker, but we're going to go way darker. Just one step at a time. Haste makes waste. So you want to have patience. There are areas where the hair can go darker, and I'm going to hit a lot of that with uh, dark brown. But in general, uh, this skin tone can probably start to make that hair go darker. Because right now everything's looking kind of yellow. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually going to use this bigger brush, and I'm going to start knocking in the hair just a little bit darker. See, it's just going a little bit darker, not that much. Baby steps. With this technique, it's harder to get like softer edges, but you can build up with washes. If for those of you that have an airbrush, you can do, use an airbrush to soften things. Also with the color pencils, we'll be able to soften things quite a bit. It's one step closer. It's still, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not there yet, but it looks cool, doesn't it? Like, it's like, it almost looks like it's finished. Like, I mean, it's not finished and you can kind of tell it's not finished, but if I said it was done and turned this in, it has kind of a cool look to it. It's got like a retro, yeah. just kind of unique look. So that's one of the neat things about this technique is it starts off looking great and it just gets better and better as you keep moving along. All right, now uh, before I go any further on the face, I see some areas here that are a little bit wet. So I don't wanna to go too crazy with that. I talked about getting rid of the white. Now, right now we have every inch of the princess covered. We have a lot of areas. He's got a white shirt. Fiji is mostly white, but I wanna control where those whites are. So what I can do now, you see how in the shadows, it's almost like a little bit purple. And even for Fiji, this is a little more brown. It almost looks a little purple in there too. That lilac, that light lilac color, if I can mix that and paint that everywhere where there's white, that is really gonna help um, when I pull the whites back out later. I wanna get rid of the whites right now. So I want to mix that super light purple. Here we go. Aladdin's hair, if you look at this reference, it almost looks like his hair is purple, like some of those sheens on there. And I know it's weird, like I worked with Eric, you know, for six years filming uh, this trilogy. His hair was never purple, but it's got this purple look and so does um, 
his strap right here, there's a little bit of purple in it, so I'm, I'm not gonna judge. I'm, I'm not gonna draw what I know. I know he doesn't have purple hair, but I see it, so I am gonna paint what I see. Oh yeah. That's what it works. Oh, even his beard too. You guys thought I was crazy, but you're probably looking at this going, you know what? It doesn't look so bad. We're gonna be doing more layers, so anything that looks a little too crazy purple now, it's not gonna be purple crazy forever. I'm gonna paint all the white armor areas of Fiji, just this light purple, because I wanna control those whites and those highlights. And having just some kind of base, like the shadow base, is really gonna help that out. So I know you guys are probably looking at this right now going, oh man, that is whack. What are you thinking, purple Fiji? No, it looks dark right now, but like later when you see like how many more layers go on, and some of the opaques, you're gonna be like, oh man, that, I remember when I was looking at that purple and I thought it was like really dark. And it really isn't, this is really light. If you look at this purple next to the black, I mean, it's really light. Let me put it that way. Same thing with the shirt. Let's do this. Doesn't have to be a lot just enough to get rid of the white. Some of these areas were actually gonna go darker with the purple, but. Like roughly how many layers do you think go on to one of these? I mean, a minimum of what, at least 100 layers? No, uh, usually not anything like that. It just depends on the piece. Sometimes just a few, and then sometimes airbrush does the rest, or sometimes I don't even use the airbrush, and it just depends. a little bit closer. I'm gonna go a little bit darker on some of the areas like in her jacket, but uh, to save time, I'm gonna use a bigger brush. This could be comic art, you know. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does at the moment. Like, like it graphic kinda, novel. It does have that kind of pop art look to it. Some of these areas might not be uh, dry enough, but what I can do now, I can go a little bit darker with the reds. So one thing I can do, I can look at the red and anywhere that I see like a darker red, because there's like a sheen on here, mm -hmm. wherever I see that darker red, I can go ahead and paint that in. This already looks kind of cool. It almost looks like, you know, it's got this just weird print. It's just kind of like garbled onto the shirt a little bit. Like the print is gonna lift, it's a crappy iron on or something like that. And it's about to lift off of the fabric. And once we add in the lights of the, the white, it does, it's not popping out as much now, but it will. These aquas are dry enough for me to go even darker, I believe they are. Mm. It's getting to the point where it's not getting much darker with this layer. So to get darker than this, I'm gonna have to start adding like some actual blues and we'll be able to push and pull as we keep going with opaques and color pencil. It's all about layering and that's part of the magic of this mixed media technique. The one kind of rule that you don't want to do, you don't want to make the mistake that I made a lot early in my studies, which was to make colors darker. I used to add black. I just thought, oh, if, if, there, if you're going lighter, you add white. So if you're going darker, you add black. And it always made my colors look so nasty. And, um, and you, if you mix black, it'll just get the colors really muddy. Shadow on the forehead goes a little darker. This goes a little darker here, a little darker there. A little darker here. This whole pocket of his eye is a little bit darker. 
and this is about as dark as that skin tone is going, so we need to mix uh, some darker shadows into there now. I've got this dark brown mixed right here, so we can get some really nice darks. Are this people ever good. surprised at the, the length of time that the wash stage takes? Do they expect to rush through it? Yeah, sometimes. And they and you know the other problem is they think, you know what? I'll finish that with color pencil or I'll finish that with another step of the technique. For each one of these steps, you have to take it to the end. You have to for the wash, that's a great I'm glad you brought that up. Because for the wash stage, you really need to take it to the end. You need to do the best. You need to pretend the, that you don't have any other stages that it's going to end with the washes and you need to do the best washes you can. That way, each step after that is, is making it that much better. But if you kind of half-ass it with the washes and then you get to the other stages and try to fix it, what you didn't do with the washes, it's not going to work. The way this technique uh, is built is it's kind of built on, on those washes. So what I want to do now, I want to add in my darker areas with this brown, this dark brown. So I've got this mixed already. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, again, I'm going to kind of start at the top and work my way uh, down, but I'm looking for any areas like in the hair here that go darker and see it's get, it's it's just taking it the next step, just a little bit darker. But then there's some areas, there's kind of like this highlight here. Good, uh-huh, uh-huh. So even with the blackest of black kind of hair color, uh, there's a series of steps then for wash layers. You know, that's a great question, but honestly, it depends on what's in the photo. Anywhere in the, you don't want to think of what color their hair is. You want to look at the photo and for every part of the hair, you have to ask what color do I see? All right, because it's what you what you see and not what you know. Exactly. So you can't get tripped up and, well, she's got black hair. I know, it, like I see purple, but she doesn't have purple hair. She's got black hair. So why would I put purple there? You can't think like that. You, you have to ignore what you've been taught and paint what you see. So like the whites of the eyes, Right now, I don't even see absolute white except for the highlights, so I don't want to paint in absolute white for the whites of her eyes because it's going to make it look like her eyes are ignited and like she's got laser eyes. So, um, I mean, I mean, as cool as that would be, some darker shadows in the face now where it gets even darker. And each step is bringing it closer and closer, and this is looking more and more like, not just the Princess of India, but this is looking a lot more like Christy Dumar as we get closer and closer. It's really starting to define the form of her face. Yeah. I just needed it a little darker. We'll pull it back to that aqua look as we move forward. But right now, you know, a lot of people get so bent up in the color. And yeah, of course you want to try to find the right color and you can do some cool things with it. But honestly, especially at this stage, it's less about color and it's more about value. How dark something is and how light something is. Anywhere that I see a little bit darker, I can kind of see in the uh, in the eyebrow here, in this part of the eye, a little bit underneath. The eye itself is a little bit darker. In general, the hair can go darker everywhere, so I'm gonna lock that in. I wanted to add one more layer of the yellow to get that yellow in there good. All right, so that is the wash stage. Now, 
The next step that I'm gonna show you guys is a little bit of a bonus. And I say that because I'm gonna show you guys the airbrush stage. And you don't have to use the airbrush stage. If you don't have one, you don't need one. You can do this great without. Some people prefer not to use the airbrush because sometimes that can give it like a dated, like 70s kind of look if you use it too much. That's why I like to do as much painting as I can. And then the airbrush is just a little bit extra. If you do all airbrush, it definitely has that early 80s, 70s kind of dated look, which maybe you want, but um, we don't want this to look dated. We want it to look timeless is kind of the idea. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use the airbrush if you want to, if you're not interested in the airbrush, you can actually skip the next video or if you wanna check it out, if you're remotely interested or definitely interested, that's what the next video is. But if you don't want, if you don't really care about the airbrush, you can actually skip to the next video, which is opaque painting. Uh, so hopefully I see you in the next video. Otherwise, the one after that. Thank you guys. Did you enjoy class today? If so, give me a like. If there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know what that is in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got a video series called Sketchbook Challenge that helps your drawing, creativity, and fill up an awesome looking sketchbook. Plus, there are videos on You Can Draw Star Wars, Hollywood is Dead, and sneak peeks at the Aladdin 3477 Motion Picture Trilogy. In order to not miss any new videos, hit that notification bell. Sharing is caring, and it's great to inspire your friends. Share this video on social media, and your friends will share awesome art tips they find with you. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. I'll see you back in the classroom soon. Don't be tardy.